What's up, Gabriel Streamcast Guy here, reviewing today Hitman 3 on the PlayStation 5. Now, I need to begin this video off with a very important question, which is this. At what point do you consider a game to be beat? Is it a matter of just killing the last boss and watching the ending credits? Or is it something more vague, like trying to finish off every single side quest? The reason I ask this is because Hitman 3 is a game that has an enormous amount of side content, hidden objectives, multiple difficulties, and just so many challenges. And honestly, I think that this is what the game is really about. While it is fun to sneak around in buildings and take out targets and stuff, what really made this the most addictive to me is just the parts of this game that are kind of secrets. The sections of this that I loved the most were the accidental amazing parts that just kind of happened purely and naturally. Honestly, it's hard to say who has beaten this game because it is something where you can see the ending credits, but the journey of Hitman 3 is about the perfection of being the flawless assassin. Now basically this game is a series of set pieces giant dramatic levels like a neon nightclub or a high dollar hotel or a huge building in the center of Dubai and you're tasked with silently taking someone out, usually a very very evil billionaire, and then slipping away unnoticed. Now at the start, every mission seems incredibly straightforward and your path is obvious. I mean after all, we are the great Agent 47, a person who's called the Apex Predator, but things are very rarely what they appear. Let's take a look at some of my failed attempts to try and get an example of all the ways this game can go right and all the times that your ideas can go terribly wrong. Now this is going to be completely spoiler free, but let's say there's some sort of scenario like you're at a fancy vineyard. There's some sort of evil people here and you need to try and slip in undetected. While you may have an invite to this event itself, you need to try and be extra stealthy. Now Agent 47 is a huge buff scary looking dude, so sometimes security is going to take notice if you're walking where you're not supposed to. So maybe you could do something like secretly kill a security guard and take their uniform and go behind the scenes. Or maybe if you're in a nightclub, you can just try and steal some dancers clothes and blend in with the crowd. Maybe you're going to do something like become a chef and sneak around in a kitchen and just poison their foods. The real glory of Hitman and the reason this series has kind of exploded in popularity is because it's a surprisingly dark universe that is just so freaking funny. Like one of my favorite kills I've ever gotten was at one point there was this weirdo guy who kept trying to talk about how he needed the ultimate bodyguard. So I managed to find the guy who was supposed to be his bodyguard. I switched clothes with him and then I showed up and went, hello, I'm Mr. Bodyguard. And he was like, all right, you seem pretty cool, but I want to test your abilities. Show me you can truly protect me by throwing these knives at targets. And so for some reason, since he took me alone by himself and I had these giant knives, I just stabbed him in the neck and got my paycheck. Now, what's the best part about this game and what really sets it apart from the other Hitman games is the fact that the storylines this time around are completely ridiculous. Now, like one of the favorite ones is at one point you take the place of a private detective who's been hired to go to this manor and inspect a murder. Now, while you're trying to solve this crime, you're investigating the crime scene, you're trying to search for clues and stuff while simultaneously trying to commit a murder of your own. Own. Every freaking level is so insane. It's like every classic Agatha Christie novel got merged together and lit on fire, and it is just so fun. But I do want to make it a note that part of the excitement of this game is that there isn't really a clear way to win. Like, if you truly want to, there is a main course. There is like a specific way that they will go through and guide you if you try and play this on easy mode. But it's also sometimes fun to just see the times that things go badly. Like, at one point, Point, I was trying to just knock out one guy in one room and guards just kept spotting me. So I secretly had to take down five people in a row, back to back. Oh no, I'm spotted. I gotta knock this guy out. And sometimes you can, if you get really frustrated, just go in guns blazing. A few times what I did while I was trying to learn a particular map and find some of the hidden challenges, I'd walk in with a freaking machine gun and mow down everybody. But this is, of course, not the optimal path. The 
the major appeal of this game is definitely the replayability because there is a detailed point system where being able to take a target out silently, not killing anybody who's innocent, or sometimes just using an improvised weapon like an icicle or something, these can all give you a bunch of bonus points that get tallied up at the end and kind of rank you as to just how good you are against other assassins worldwide. And it really feels nice to be rewarded for your own extreme ideas at times. Now, I do want to say it's nice to see this game, but one of the major drawbacks is just the fact that it does still feel like the AI is very, very hit and miss. Sometimes I've had people see me through doors. I've had times where people would just be standing there where I killed targets right next to them. There is still a little bit of a random feeling to stuff. And since this is about meticulous planning and carefully dropping targets, it can be frustrating that there is a certain amount of unpredictability to the AI. The programming of the computer controlled players is just a little bit inconsistent. Not so much that I got frustrated, but the fact that I could still just save when I wanted and stuff made it where I did have a lot of trial and error experimentation that was mostly trial and a lot of freaking error. But this could also be highlighted by the fact that there is just so much to do in every single level. There are literally hundreds of ways to kill your targets, from dropping them in an elevator electrocuting them or just straight up trying to steal a gun off the ground and kill somebody. At one point I got into a freaking mind control experimentation booth and fried somebody's brain by messing up an experiment on purpose. Like there's just so many tiny chances and great opportunities for epic deaths. This does bring us though to the challenge mode, which is that there are tons of hidden objectives in every single map, like trying to drop people in a specific way, or sometimes you can have it where a person dies after you've left. I've poisoned drinks and food occasionally while posing as a chef, disappeared, and kind of let nature take its course. And this is really where I feel like the game shines the brightest, is just getting to let your creativity be weaponized. Another drawback, though, is the fact that I didn't particularly love the story. I've loved the Hitman games in the past. I have played literally all of them, including Blood Money and Contracts and everything, but this one, I, I just feel like the plot is too thin. This is supposed to be putting the focus on Agent 47, on these characters. It is his final game. The trailers and stuff have really advertised this as the conclusion of the Agent 47 storyline, but it's barely talked about. Like a lot of times you go in here and you have these fun missions and the incredibly cool gameplay and stuff, but it feels weird that there isn't more of a resolution. It does kind of feel like a drawback that they didn't try and emphasize the character of Agent 47 more. Like I kind of wish the fact that there was more writing, more of an emphasis on the fact that we are the apex predator. We are this special cloned super killer. And it just really feels like it's not addressed to a good conclusion. But I mean, it's not even a matter of the end it's just the fact that this is the last part of a trilogy and it doesn't really feel like it. It doesn't feel like there's any payoff to any of the clues and hints and stuff that were established in the earlier Hitman games. Overall, this is an incredibly fun experience. If you're looking for a game that is very sneaky, that is going to have a lot of replayability, that is going to give you a lot of freedom and choice and chaos, this is absolutely it. If you're somebody looking for a more cut and dry experience though, this might be a little bit too freeform for you. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Hitman 3 an 8.5 out of 10. As a final note here at the end of the video, I do want to mention that this is played on a PlayStation 5, and there is some tiny stuff in this version that feels great. I like the fact that there's no load times. I do really enjoy the haptic triggers. Different guns actually pull the triggers physically in different ways, and obviously, the graphics are gorgeous. Thanks so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.